With season 9 right around the corner, many people are wondering how to jumpstart your Nico only account for the upcoming ranked ladder. Survival means blending in. Nico is one of the more difficult champions to be released in recent memory, with no cross map one shots, no half health executes, and no 50% damage reduction. She relies more on trickery to make herself viable. The epitome of this being her passive, Inherent Glamour. She can turn into any champion on her team, and learning to use this ability properly is what will set apart average Nico players from great ones. Nico's passive is all about giving false information to the enemy team. There are a few key ways you'll be using your passive to get the most value out of it. Transforming into your jungler has a lot of benefits. The core of the early game, tracking the enemy jungler, is a very important part of every League of Legends game. Becoming your jungler and showing, for example, on the opposite side of the map, can really open up gank opportunities for your jungler. If the enemy team thinks the jungler is bot lane, the top laner may push or play more aggressively, opening himself up to ganks and potential gold for your team. This is also important for fooling the enemy jungler. Showing bot side as your jungle may make the enemy jungler think it's okay to invade when it's actually unsafe. With the popularity of vertical jungling, showing your jungler walk through the river early game can throw the enemy team for a loop and lead to big early advantages for your jungler. As a final note, less useful but still potentially very powerful is turning into your jungler for a gank. For example, transforming into a Lee Sin when ganking a lane may make them hide behind minions to dodge the Lee Sin Q. In turn, setting up your Tango Barbs to go through minions and achieve its longer root duration. With Nico, you have to be very aware of both teams. Knowing where wards are and tracking both junglers' paths is important to provide you with the most effective early game. Potentially the most effective way to get kills in the early game is using your passive to gank the bottom lane. Recalling with your bot lane and walking in the lane in the form of your AD carry is a great way to gank with low risk. Walk forward and let the enemy team engage on you, being careful not to make it too obvious. You'll get a free ult and full combo, making it easy to 2v3. This transformation is so effective in solo queue because it works even better the further your bot lane is behind. The more confident the enemy bot lane, the more likely they'll engage into your gank. This leads directly into the next tactic, transforming into your support or other high value targets for the enemy team. Transforming into a high value target during the mid or late game such as Nami or Soraka can be a very effective way to draw suboptimal engages out of the enemy team. This works with any target the enemy team will be desperate to pick out of position, such as a weak support, AD carry, or important target on your team like a fed Katarina. This is a very easy way to draw an engage out of the enemy team and make for an easy and strong counter engage. Baiting the enemy team to engage on you is Nico's bread and butter, making it very easy to land your ult and full combo. While learning about combos, we first need to understand the interaction between abilities. Nico's E, Tangle Barbs, is her ultimate setup tool. Your other two normal abilities take time to set up with their three procs. The easiest way to do this is to E through minions for the longer root duration into Q and auto attack, but if you're not able to get your E through multiple targets, if you're fighting in the jungle or the river, you need to Q first. Without the longer root duration, your Q will only hit one or two explosions. If you Q first, you'll get the third proc before your E even lands, allowing you to get the full damage of your combo with low risk to yourself. The only downside to this is that it requires you to be at lower range and to be sure you'll land the follow-up route. With a little bit of practice, it's easy to land and will be much more effective in moments when pass-through units are unavailable. Let's get this out of the way. Nico isn't Zoe. Nico isn't Urgot. Nico isn't going to one-shot anyone unless you combo properly. EQ combo is very unlikely to be all you need to kill someone during the mid-game, especially if they've accrued one or more defensive items. The easiest way to win a 1v1 is to make best use of your W to get off two rotations of your spells. Think of Nico's W as a Zhonya's. With 30-40% to 40 CDR, you'll need a good 4 seconds of downtime to get off your second rotation during a fight. The best way to get this extra time is to master your W's active. Shape Splitter will give you at least 1 second to reset and put yourself in a better position with its invisibility and move speed boost. If you throw W properly and your enemy goes for your clone, this will almost always free you up to land your next rotation, especially if they blow cooldowns on it. 
Very rarely will you be allowed to walk up to the enemy champion while transformed without being hit, so engaging with your ultimate can be a risky move, especially if your opponent is slightly tankier and you won't kill them with a full combo. The safest way to engage is to begin with the simple EQ or QE combo. Think of Nico sort of like Lux. You fish for a binding and once you hit it, that signals you engage fully, and you'll almost always win and get the kill. Once you hit your E, throw out Q and W at the same time, with ult following instantly. With your root, the ultimate will hit 100% of the time, barring Azanya's or other invulnerability spells. Since your E is only a root, throwing out W while charging ultimate allows you to dodge a lot of damage before the shield from Pop Blossom comes in. Once your ult hits, you'll get an easy second rotation and this should kill nearly any champion with no risk. Now that you know the combos, we'll go over the best builds for Nico. but first, I want to go over a couple important items and their special interactions. Sonya's is a great item for Nico. It provides CDR, which Nico loves, and a great amount of survivability, especially in those key situations when you're getting dove while transformed as a value target, and when you're in the middle of a fight trying to hit everyone with your ult. On top of that, you can actually begin your ult channel and pop Sonya's, keeping you safe if you want to get off a big ult but can't afford to be in the middle of a team during the charge duration. Like Sonya's, Banshee's is great for survivability and provides CDR. The perk to Banshees on Nico though is that it goes invisible when you transform, but it will still block spells. The only downside is that the purple outline around your health bar will still show Banshees, so if your target doesn't have it, it may give you away, but if the enemy team isn't paying close attention, it's a great way to draw and engage while staying safe. The first full Nico build, and my personal favorite, is a CDR and semi-tanky base build, making use of the Glacial Augment Mage build that gained popularity toward the end of Season 8. It starts, of course, with Glacial Augment as your keystone, followed by a Magical Footwear, Minion Dematerializer, and Cosmic Insight, with Mana Flow Band and Water Walking for the secondary. For items, you'll pick up the usual, Hextech GLP, Spooky Ghosties, and Early Boost to help with the roaming, which you'll be doing a lot of. Next is of course somewhat situational. Personally, I like to opt for both Banshees and Zhonya's since they synergize so well with Nico and her transform playstyle. You'll lose a bit of damage not opting for Morales and Deathcap right away, but the added playability and versatility of Zhonya's and Banshees more than makes up for it in my eyes. That said, if you're far ahead, or your team really is just lacking damage, feel free to slot these items in as needed. If the enemy team has a beefy tank or is just building generally tanky, Leandris isn't a bad pickup for the late game. The Glacial Augment build is, as always, very versatile and gives a ton of benefits. The main of those is its utility. The slows from GLP and Twin Shadows bring great pick potential to the mid and late game, making it easy to land your skill shots and stick to targets with your W passive auto attacks. Not only that, but having Glacial Augment as your keystone lets you land two procs of your Q without even having to use your E, as long as you get an auto off. If you're sick of playing utility and you just want to one-shot a poor bot laner, you can opt for the more burst-focused proto-up build. Still making use of Revolver early in combination with your W, you also get the added benefit of being able to protobelt the mid wave so you can push fast and roam to make use of your passive. After protobelt you'll be grabbing Morellos, Deathcap, and Zhonya's for late survivability, the usual. You can also choose to pick up an early Lich Bane after protobelt. It works great with your passive and adds a bit more damage if you're able to get those auto attacks off, but I prefer to skip this item and head straight for Morellos. You can always pick it up again later though for the final punch you need to one shot someone late game. With this build you'll be taking Electrocute to add even more burst to your combo, followed by the usual. Ludens is a bit pointless on Nico. it doesn't add much to her kit and makes her a bit too squishy to survive going into Thult, but if you're looking to have fun and just burst people down with the standard mage build, Nico can definitely do that. An unfortunately out of date item, Rod of Ages, it would be great for Nico, except opting for it forces you to give up the early revolver of the other builds and it takes a bit too long to come online. Nico really shines in the mid game. Now that we know the builds, let's talk about the early game. Nico thrives in early to mid game, where wards are most scarce and you have ample opportunity to roam. Nico loves to push lane. If you can get your lane into the enemy turret, it means your side of the lane is dark. This lets you step back and make use of your passive, even if it's just to, for a moment, step into the river and trick the enemy jungler into thinking yours is pathing a certain way. Try to get roams off anytime you can. If you're just sitting in lane, it means you're an ability down on your opponent. You have no passive unless you're able to free yourself up from the traditional lane phase, which means strong enemy laners like LeBlanc will have advantages on you. Early game is the time when you'll be focused most on fooling the enemy jungler and creating unease in the enemy team. You don't always have to roam. Push your wave to create the darkness on your side of the map, then just turn into your jungler and drop a ward on the pixel brush on either side. If the enemy has warded these areas and sees you, they can be fooled that your jungler is somewhere he's not. Then you can just walk back to lane. All you did was put down a ward, but to the enemy team, you've created a problem that they need to consider. Next time, push the lane and just hang back by your tower or recall. This will keep you safe from ganks, but also, if you've focused on roaming frequently, the enemy team may assume you're going for a gank and play safer, allowing other lanes to take priority. These are just a few examples of the trickery you can get off in the early game. Every match is different, play it by ear and try to fool the enemy team with your roams. 
Mid game is very similar to the early game. You'll still be roaming a lot and focusing on creating deception as your jungler, but more often than not, you should be transforming to the support. Pretending you're just a ditzy little support walking through the river is a great way to pull those suboptimal engages from the enemy team that I mentioned earlier. Nico is good in team fights, especially if you're the one getting engaged on. So try to help your team take neutral objectives like Dragon and Rift Herald, but don't go wandering around through the jungle on your own looking for solo kills. Nico isn't a great 1v1er unless you catch someone completely off guard. Assassins or Bruisers will generally destroy you in a 1v1. Late game is when numbers begin to falter, and Nico really relies on the smart use of her passive to be useful. If you're ahead, your ult scales very well and you can get off a lot of damage in teamfights, but it's risky, and strutting up in a teamfight to hit R won't always work. Again, try to bait poor engages from the enemy team with good transformations. Nico really doesn't do much to tanks and bruisers in the late game, so you'll be mostly relying on your ability to kite and get off multiple rotations during a teamfight. Try to hit your E roots on key targets so your team can follow up and secure easy kills. Don't go in gung ho with your ultimate every fight. Save it to peel for yourself if you get dove. One last time, Nico is a very complex champion. She isn't going to one shot an entire team at once like LeBlanc or Aatrox, unless you're fed. You have to use your brain. Now I know from experience in solo queue that this may be difficult for some of you, but with time and practice you'll get the hang of it. I think Nico is one of the best champions Riot has put out in a long time and I'm excited to make more videos for her in the future. I'm going to be doing an unranked master with 100% Nico only during season 9 and all of it will be recorded here on the channel so I hope you guys look forward to that. And I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something about how to play Nico. See ya.